Hi, so welcome to today's session. So today I'm, I wanted to look at DNSSEC, um, but then I said let me start first by explaining what DNS is so that, uh, so that, so that uh, we can now progressively move to DNSSEC. I tried to sit down and prepare some slides, but I said no, forget about it. So I had some nice, um, I got some nice uh, uh, content from some other place. And um, so I was doing my research and because of time I said, oh, I just explain what DNS is and, and direct you guys to some awesome material. Of course, I'll simplify that for you, but then I'd want you to take time and read that and have a clear understanding of what DNS is. Great, so um, <clears throat> so DNS stands for Domain Name System, and um, uh, that that is a, a protocol on its own. So there's this site called um, RFC Editor. I don't know whether most of some of you have uh, come across it. It's called RFC Editor right here right where i am at the moment and so this site has got like all the information concerning all sorts of protocols that you might want to uh, gather uh, in-depth information about if you want to understand how it works and whatnot this is the best site uh, to to go it's like a bible yeah that um uh it is the truth um uh, of uh it gives you the truthful information about uh, the protocols any protocol that you might want to know any information uh, about uh, you visit this uh, very site well so um, so just uh, and then of course I have another other sites too but uh, at the moment I think I'll just uh, focus on this one yeah so um, I'll go to home. Uh, so the domain names is, is under RFC 1035. Yeah, that is uh, the code for um, the DNS. And we are being told that. Um, so I, I'll go through this document, uh, but, but I'll not be reading it. So already I've gone through it. So I'll just like give a summary. And uh, most of you might be wondering what is uh, domain name or DNS. DNS. So most of the times we have um, we we access websites like the same way I have accessed the RFC editors you're seeing here. And uh, we understand that computers don't under, don't don't work with uh, with words the way we do. Uh, words are easy. For human beings to memorize and remember to easily type a name for like RFC editor you can't remember that but you can't easily remember digits so what computers uh, work with actually it's binary so but before it converts anything to binary so we have to convert whatever uh, name we are typing into some form of an IP address uh, <coughs> because uh, the computer will convert the IP into uh, binary form and of course to be able to process that but then let's not even get into those uh, details so um, so each so there has to be a system that works under the hood that maps the um, the names that we type in like RFC editor dot com or dot org whatever it is so that system is the DNS yeah it's like the backbone of uh, we can say it's like uh, the backbone of the internet because um, if you break that the whole internet is down yeah some call it the Achilles heel whatever yeah but it is a very important component of the internet and so today we we, we, we just like have a look at um, I know <laughs> you might be wondering uh, so extensive what you're going to look at is uh, just the dns in general just an overview and then uh, i think I because there's so much on this um i can't combine this topic with the dns tech so next time uh, i'll go and uh, look at dns tech 
and and I'll also look at uh, because I covered some videos and I was looking at uh, the fields of each protocol because you want to understand what kind of uh, information each protocol has and what that what those fields actually do so we'll also have a video for that because we have like four major fields for a resource record and what we call rr but within then within them also we have other other fields also yeah so i think it will be nice if um, we can create time and uh, look at those so we have um, so i have uh, I have this resource just like open it so there is this uh, mem mem mice I mean it just gives us like a simple explanation of what of what uh, of what of what a DNS is and its architecture and what what I want what I want you to have in mind is uh, just a minute I get this one off so a DNS is like a tree. That's why we say it's a hierarchical system uh, of different types of uh, DNS servers. Yeah, and uh, so, so you go, you buy a domain name, and one of the most important things you are asked to, you know, um, have in mind when you are configuring your DNS and whatnot, or you, if you are doing transfer and whatnot, uh, the DNS servers that. Uh, you're you given given like four of them yeah um so what are the different types of uh, the dns servers so that's that's what uh, we'll basically look at so when you look at uh, this diagram right here uh you see that uh, we have the client so the client might be whatever application you you are trying to access it can be it can be a web web browser you're accessing it can be a mail a mail application you're trying to send a mail because also that relies on dns um it might be another application that is just uh, calling some api because that api at the end of the day resolves to a dns so you can see how uh, messy things can be because we have so many services that rely on uh, dns so not only web browsing mails and uh, other applications that are talking on uh, on on the internet so all of them are based on uh, the DNS. <coughs> so whenever the client uh, sends a request in form of, uh, you know, it can be your search, you're entering a query, you're searching for something, and then that that, that one uh, is converted to like uh, a, a, a query. So uh, maybe an, an operating system query, whatever it is. So the first point uh, where that hits is, um, before you get the response so that's a request you're sending so what's happening here is uh this is uh this is a request i don't know whether my pen is working so we ha we have this request so this one is a request and then this one is a response uh if we change color but uh, i think i'll go with what i have yeah so this that's a request you're sending a request when you're entering a query and then the first point where that hits is the request what we call uh, a resolver yeah and uh, we have a recursive and iterative uh, resolver but we'll get to that i think in the next topic i won't touch that but we have uh, a resolver and the function of a resolver is like um i saw somewhere a good example when you're getting into a library you're going to look for a book suppose that is uh, an example you can use what happens is uh, the first person you encounter at the counter who is supposed to give you a book that becomes like uh, your your resolver because this person has got an idea of where whatever you're looking for is because it has knows the mapping of things so that's what a, a resolver does basically does it's the one that helps you to go and uh, look for the uh, resource that you're looking for in the internet by uh, actually trying to ask for the information from a number of uh, of uh, the servers yeah and so we have these servers um so, someone might confuse and uh, think that maybe um the the resolver is a resolver a server no a resolver is a program it can be a program um that is part of uh, the client um, uh, it can be on the client side or it can be 
uh, hosted uh, on the side if the client doesn't have the capabilities of um, you know uh, hosting the resolver then it can be um, a service hosted uh, just somewhere yeah that the client now will call and then the resolver will get the answer and then give it back to the client yeah but if the client has the capabilities of um, uh, in terms of uh, resources uh, of uh, hosting a, a, a resolver then uh, it's normally most times part of uh, the client so it can be a program in the client it can be a library a library called that's called by a system for the, those ones who are software engineers you understand what i mean here yeah so the resolver will uh, uh for it so uh there's one thing that we are missing here and um, that thing is um sometimes we have a cache here so we have uh, the resolver can check in a cache memory so it has some sort of uh, cache right here and uh, what the cache does it uh, always keeps um information regarding the sites that uh, the client has accessed before uh, so a mapping of uh, the, uh, the the whatever information that has been entered of the domain name and uh, to, to IP address uh, kind of mapping so it always has it but the it's always the cache is not always accurate so it, it needs to be deleted and updated every other time so that's also what normally happens most at times so when the client sends a request the resolver will check in the cache if there is any update information in concern con concerning um, the user request if it's not there what happens is uh, it now um, sends that request to uh, that query to i mean the root servers uh, to, to, uh, to the root server which is normally the first server that is uh, accessed uh, before it gets to the other servers so uh, at some point I read that the root servers also have a cache they keep a cache but uh, that is something maybe I need to clarify going forward so the root server <coughs> is normally the starting point and we have like 13 root servers across the world uh, being managed by IANA so um, and they are distributed because uh, DNS is a uh, is, is a distributed service. It's not. It's not like we have a central. It's not cent The architecture is not uh, a centralized one. It's a distributed kind of system. So we have a redundant. Uh, um, it's a, re a redundant system uh, servers uh, for root servers and uh, uh, TLDs and whatnot. Yeah. So. What happens most of the times if when we hit the root server, whatever root server that uh, is uh, near and uh, yeah, um, the appropriate root server for that matter, when we hit the root server, it, it will check to see whether the query is correct and if it has an answer to that, if it doesn't have that, then it falls it to, I uh, sends it all the way to, you know, the top level uh, domain name server yeah and we look at what a top, top level domain name uh, server is so if we don't have a response here then we have the from the top level we have what we call um we have what we call the authoritative uh, server so in most cases the authoritative server is the one that has now the um the ip yeah so we get uh, the ips that are mapped to whatever uh whatever whatever name was uh, asked for is found always in the authoritative server and then of course the ip is sent back to the resolver and then the resolver can sa save that in the cache and then uh, send it back to send the correct response to to the client so that's what happens most at times okay so we have uh, i can just do away with this Alright, so um, yeah, and uh, most of the times you what you do is uh, when when you, you can have um, you can configure the DNS when, uh, on your 
PC or on your gadget by yourself or we have we can have a software that can configure this automatically for you especially if you're accessing some uh, resource in a well, well organized uh, um, in an organization that uh, you know has a well set up IT infrastructure in place so you don't have to go ahead and uh, you know uh, set up the DNS and whatnot and uh, if the organization does not have its own uh, DNS uh, servers, most of the times they use the third-party servers like uh, Cloudflare. We have, uh, I think, zones for Google 8.8.8 .8 and so on and so forth. So we also have those that can be third-party uh, DNS servers that you can use. Um, yeah. Well, so we have the DNS root server, root, uh, root name server here. And as I said before, it's the first server that uh, is accessed, right? It's the first server that is accessed when there is when the re uh, resolver doesn't have an answer to the query from uh, the client. Um, that query is always first sent to the uh, root name, uh, root domain uh, servers to try and establish if they have answers to it. Yeah. Um, so. So, so we said that, that uh, the DNS is a, it's like a tree and it's like an inverted tree. So the root is not at the bottom. It's always, it's always the first thing to be accessed and it's always at the top. And uh, so we access the root first and then if we don't have, uh, we start with the root server to ensure that uh, we, are, we are handling a correct tree and um, yeah. And if, if we don't get, so for example, we have min, men, menant, this is men, menantmice.com, and we can also have menantmice.net, right? So these ones uh, fall under different TLDs, that's top level domain um, server. So, so uh, menantmice will, will get it under the top level domain of uh, .com and uh, the menantmice.net that that will also be in a different um uh, top level domain so you see they belong they, they, they if if a user entered any of those they belong to different destinations so the tld the top the root server will be able to point us to the correct um uh, top level domain where we can get the answer so that's what the root root server normally does yeah uh Okay, um, so the root server always points us to the correct uh, TLD, the top level domain server where we can access the, um, the the resource that we are looking for. And I will get back to that to summarize that again. So, and then we also have what we call the, uh, so f the top level domain is like the .com, .org, and how you uh, you split the domain so the domain is like when, when you're talking of a domain domain is we, we, we refer to the domain as a, some sort of space yeah so when you hear domain just have in mind space so the dot com is a space the dot net is a space reserved to all domains that are fall under the dot net we have the dot org we have uh, dot now for countries also those domain names reserved for countries like dot ke dot uh, uh, uk and so forth and so on and so forth yeah so this is a top level domain uh, space okay and then below it also we we go all the way now to uh, top level and then uh, we have of course uh, so we check so once you, the user enters a query, we check to which top level domain does it fall under. And that's the work of the root server to point us to the right uh, uh, top level domain, right? Um, right. So, so for example, here you can see we have um, uh, different types of uh, top level domains. Uh, we have the generic gen, generic uh, top level domains uh, so like the dot com dot net and so on and so forth and then we have those ones that uh, we call uh, sponsored uh, top level domains uh, for example you can see um, 
you know they are based on can they, they can be sponsored and they can be clarified uh, based on ethnicity geography and so on and so forth and then <coughs> and then we have those ones that are non-sponsored yeah but they are being maintained by the iana uh, you can get the examples and then we have those ones for uh, that that have been reserved for countries so like the dot ke uh, dot uk uh, uh, dot us and so on and so forth russia for RU and so on and so forth and then we, of course we have those ones that have been internationalized yeah um yeah so that those all those fall under the the tld the top level domain yeah remember at the top there we had the root domain yeah the root server which points us to uh, the TLD and then if we don't have so the TLD will point us to the right uh, TLD if we're looking for dot com it will point us to the uh, the dot com servers and then the, the TLD now will also point us uh, to the right um, authoritative server yeah which which actually has the IP the IP for that resource we are looking for in full and so when we are we are, we are when we are looking at uh, when 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 you are reading when we are reading the domain names we start from the right we don't start from the left yeah so yes so here you can see we are moving from the top level to with the top level domain server we hit the right one and then we get the the right uh, top level domain now will point us to the uh, correct uh, authoritative server that has the exact IP address that we're looking for and then it will be able to uh, send back a response to the uh, the resolver and then the resolver of course will send that uh, IP to the client okay and that's basically it so you can see it's a uh, step by step and uh, if you'd want to follow through the step then I think you can visit the main my site with the nice diagrams it has simplified diagram by the way you can use that well so that is uh, how the DNS works basically and um, I also wanted us to have a look at uh, to go back to the RFC I know um, let me see I think uh, so when you get to the RFC, the first thing you might want to do, for, for my case, you know, there are so many protocols, right? So uh, you can see we have uh, internet standards, so protocols will be under here. So you will just need to click that and, or you can use the search feature. So I can say I'm looking for DNS right there. And uh, you can see now I have, uh, I, you can use the RFC number. I know D DNS is 10.5, RFC 10.5. So if you use that one also, it will be able to direct you to the correct resource. So you can see this RF DNS is RFC 10.5. How do I identify that? Um, <coughs> when you look at uh, this table, we have internet standard. So I'm looking at the internet standard. That's the protocol. Uh, the rest, you can see these are experimental. That means they are not yet at a stage that... Um, uh, uh, can access stage where those protocols are now widely accepted that uh, they've not meet certain thresholds so they're still under test so we still have quite a number of those that are being worked on for example we have for DNS security and so on and so forth and I will be uh, talking about that sometime later but today it is just all about DNS so we want to you want to read a pdf you want information in a ski format or in html or with html with the, you know uh, inline errata whatever it is so i'll just i i'll pick um, html and i think we're good to go so here this is a documentation to do with the um, um, dns and uh, if you scroll all the way down there you will see that uh, it has quite a lot of information so what we talked about is just an overview and uh, most of this work was uh, uh, borrowed from can see acknowledgement from a number of books here most of them written in the 1985 uh, from let's just say 1985 to 1988 or thereabout 
So you can see 1997, 95. So you can imagine this work was worked on at that time. Um, and <clears throat> and the DNS in itself hasn't changed much. It is uh, what it's been for that long. And it's working perfectly okay. So one big problem we have with DNS is uh, it was when when it was being uh, when they're working on DNS, they did not factor in uh, issues to do with security that much, right? But the functionality is perfect. I mean, it's able to enable us communicate uh, flawlessly here and there. Yeah, but the security bit has issues, and so we have what called DNSSEC that was built on top of it. Yeah, it's not like uh, in an integral part of it, but something a, build, a layer built on top of uh, DNS to just ensure that we have uh, security. But we'll have a session to look at that. Yeah. So uh, what do I want to look at? So let me take you back to the resolver thing we're looking at at the moment. So we have a user program here, it sends a query. Uh, so some of these things can be resolved local. The query can. So if you if the resolver is uh, lock is part of the local host uh, part of the uh, client machine, uh, most probably it has a cache in there. And uh, if the user accesses uh, that has access that has had access to that resource before, then it's so easy for the resolver. It just picks that from the cache for as long as the cache is up to date and returns a response. But if the resource that the user is looking for is not uh, is, is an existent in the cache. <coughs> what happens is uh, the resolver will have to go all the way and start uh, querying the foreign uh, servers. And you remember we started with the uh, things like uh, you know the root server. Yeah, uh, we had the root, and then we go all the way to the TLD, and then of course to the authoritative server. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, those when you're talking of the foreign. This is this is basically what you're talking about. All these three, yeah, yeah. So it will it will do that, and then the authoritative server, of course, will get back to us with the the IP to the exact resource that the user was looking for. Yeah. So basically, <coughs> that's uh, the simplest uh, uh, explanation of uh, what happens here. And initially, before DNS. We had we used to have what we call what uh, host system. So maybe, um, yeah, we used to have what we call the host dot txt. You know, uh, system of uh, you know mapping the IP addresses to the names. But that 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 was uh, efficient. Uh, because that was efficient at that time because the we did not have so many users. Uh, using the internet but as we started having more and more um, users and uh, you know services in the internet talking to each other and whatnot this uh, host uh, the txt system could not sustain that and so that's why uh, we had to come up with the dns uh, system which is uh, as i said it is distributed yeah, and, and it scales quite well. Yeah, the only major problem it has, uh, it has security issues. Yes, um, that we will look at later on. Okay, so um, yeah, so this ma when you when you when you hear master files, that most probably that file we are talking about is the host.txt because most of uh, most of the host files master files what they they have is this host.txt uh, kind of uh, file that has records of uh, the uh, mapping of um, the dns mapping of uh, uh, ip address uh, names to to ip addresses right so those are that's basically the host file right um yeah so this file is always uh, uh, updated um, continuously because when uh, the user enters uh, looks for a certain resource and uh, it doesn't exist as uh, part of uh, the master file it's the first place the program checks so if uh, 
doesn't get it there next time it gets the resource from the foreign servers uh, from the for foreign uh, res um, uh, uh, resolver of course it will always the local host resolver will always update the host.txt file yeah and uh, you can say that is like the cache or something the cache we are talking about the memory <laughs> yeah so that is it uh, some interesting stuff so I really I, I, I would encourage someone to really read uh, this document because it makes it, the understanding it, the language is so easy I mean uh, it can look scary but uh, it's the best place for you to go and read to have an understanding and I think everything we talked about is uh, right here yeah um, so the foreign servers I told you what those are and so on and so forth so <coughs> We have this. Uh, we also have. Um, okay. Yeah. So so if we have uh, a number of uh, hosts in the network, sometimes it is uh, good to have like um, a shared database of um, where, where we we have like an update of uh, the mapping of uh, of. Um, the DNS records, right? So we don't have to have each and every host in the network, you know, having a copy of the same. So for efficiency, we have like one central uh, uh, location of truth. Yeah. So um, which 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 gives us and which updates um, all those records uh, every other time. Every so when the when one cl when one client uh, tries to look for a record that doesn't exist. Uh, that is updated when the the next client looks for the exact copy it's able to just get it uh, locally because uh, the database was updated so that's the kind of architecture that uh, most uh, organization would uh, would have in place yeah so we have uh, like a, um, a a database for a caching database as some sort of a cdn yeah for the domain name uh, resource okay so yeah basically that is uh, all to do with DNS and I think next time round when you're looking at uh, DNS tech we'll go and break it down and uh, look at the different fields and uh, types and all that that is uh, contained in there um, yes yeah so these are like the different types you see uh, types of records of course we have the a, 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 a we have mx and so on and so forth we shall try to explain what those mean and uh, the functions they play and especially in terms of security how uh, the malicious people can use some of those uh, uh, fields to you know transfer some information that uh, they'd want to get from one end to another using DNS of course and try to break it apart to see why DNS is insecure right so we look at that and uh, there's uh, some section of uh, because at the end of the day the communication is in form of uh, messages yeah so when we send a request it's in form of a message and where I actually wanted to take you is uh, this place so the message is in form of uh, so a message is broken down into different section that message is a package and within it we have the header and the header is what contains the uh, field in the different fields I was mentioning uh, uh, just uh, a few uh, seconds ago um, that has different types and whatnot so we have the header section <coughs> uh, without that section you can't even be able to tell whether this is a DNS based uh, query or not and so on and so forth but the header information has all that information we know that this is a DNS protocol and whatnot and then of course we have a section that carries the question for the name server so the when the user enters when the user searches for something or when a program is looking for a certain resource it uh, uh, looks for that in form of a query yeah it's a question so we have a that that is uh, carried in the question section and if this message is uh, is a is a response from some name server, then of course we have an a section for the answer to tell us that uh, this message that's being transferred is an answer and it's not a query. And then uh, <coughs> we have the authority, which is a resource record, a 
pointing towards an, an, uh, an authoritative server or whatever and then of course any additional information will be will reside under the additional uh, uh, section for the resource record yeah so basically that is it for the dns and i will call it a day uh, for today i don't know if there is any other thing i wanted to show you wait 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 there's some additional information i can even i uh, i think i should uh, show you to even further clarify uh, to clarify some of these things uh, let me see yes i think i need to yeah so there's also this uh, document right here wait i just missed that one all right yeah so <clears throat> i think this one explains it quite well how the tree structure looks like because uh without me drawing so you can see when when uh, the resolver is uh, is looking for a certain resource and it's not uh, a part of the cache what it does um it will look it will uh, send that query to the immediate uh, root server and the root server here is denoted by a dot and so the root server will always point us to the correct top level domain because you can see here <coughs> we have different types of top top level domains for uh, by the way so um so we have dot edu dot com and i told you when you're reading a domain name you start from the right like this site is dev dot two right so a fully qualified uh, domain uh, name will have a dot at the end we call that fq dn you've seen this somewhere it always has a dot at the end because this is dot stands for the root right so you have the dot and then two is the tld the top level domain right right here you can see dot edu whatever dot com we can add dot org we can add dot two so the root server will always point us to the correct tld so you can see the tld here yeah so when you're looking for when you're looking for a resource and then uh once we hit the correct uh uh tld we the tld now will point us to the tld also has got uh, what we call um second level domain yeah in case in case uh, <coughs> for example we might have mit uh, dot edu yeah but we, we so and, and even before mit so let, let's have uh, an example here so we have uh, let's construct uh, a domain name here maybe one that already exists so we have um, yeah so we have the top the root and then we have uh, education because the our res the resource we are looking for is educational best uh, resource right and then uh that resource it happens that uh, it's part of the mit uh, resources so the tld will be mit dot edu right um and then before that um this resource might be uh might be an email so we are looking for a mail resource because we want to send some email yeah maybe you're part of mit so that means you'll have to go all the way to the third level domain right and so this one now becomes like uh and even below this we can also have other subdomains so these are these are what we call uh, subdomains so the main domain is mit dot edu that's like the registered uh, a domain but then within it we have subdomains like uh, the third level a domain like um uh let's say uh, mail mail dot mit dot edu that will now becomes a subdomain and even you can have some other subdomains below that right so we always start reading from the right the root and then we call we go to the tld and then we go to the second uh, sld so this is a tld we have the sld all these are spaces yeah because these are different domain dot ed is a domain dot mit is a domain dot mi so domain spaces these are different domain spaces as i said before you and then we have dot mail this is um, a, a space too so you can say domain or space right yeah so that is the tree structure starting from the root to the tld to 
uh, uh, SLD to TLD third level domain which we most of the times we just like refer to this as subdomain so subdomain domain uh, yeah and so on and so forth so <coughs> basically that is it so I, 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 I am because since I'm very lazy to draw I did not want to waste time drawing that and uh, this guy did a great job here yeah so examples of TLD you can see dot com dot net dot de and so on and so forth yeah um, yeah so resources might be on the same TLD but uh, on the second uh, second level domain we might they, they might differ like we, we have mail mail dot google dot com and we also have mail dot yahoo dot com so the sec yeah the second level domain gives us a separation yeah from uh, the top level domain so all of them mail.google.com belong to the top level domain or dot com and even mail.yahoo.com also belong to the same top level domain dot com but the um the second level uh a domain uh we have google and we have yahoo yeah so those are different domains yeah and uh yes well so we said that we have like 13 root servers across the world and uh, of course this dns resource is decentralized and if one that means if one uh, server fails one root server fails at some point we should be able to get like uh, this resource from some other place because the resources are decentralized and that's how we are we are able to serve so many people across the world because uh, and, and there's a way they uh, they are synced together there's some sort of uh, app system that updates those records every other time and um, there was just one place uh, sometimes if you change uh, your DNS records if you if you have a domain if you've hosted an application and um, due to one reason or the other you had to maybe migrate it to some other different um, <coughs> uh, servers we call them authoritative servers for example for a different provider you this the, the internet will at some point in the uh, across the internet will have cache information of your previous record so um, we have a tool called uh, a Google tool I don't know if I can access that um, uh, this one is just to check if your records are correct so if you've made any changes we call this tool called dig uh, Google tool so you can enter your 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 <coughs> your um your resource name here that, that means basically if it is www.mit.edu you can do that like if i want to check the information let me see if that exists but mit if there's anything like that i can just enter that and uh, i can see the resource is not found because maybe this is not correct but if I enter any information of uh, some other site, uh, you can Yahoo, Yahoo.com. Yeah, you can see it has its uh, information right here. So this is uh, the A uh, under resource record. The A stands for IP addresses. Um, the IP address, IP version four address. Triple L stands for the IP version six address. And the rest of the information we'll be looking at this uh, kind of uh, uh, resource record, uh, uh, different uh, uh, categories of uh, data that fields of the resource record that we have. Yeah. So this is for Yahoo and uh, so on and so forth. So if you just want to check to see that uh, your DNS record uh, resource record is uh, up to date, you can check it right here. Uh, if you want to clear cache, for example, I don't know if I still have that site with me, but um, um, let me just search it for you here, Google resource. Me see if we have that a ah, flash cache correct so if you want to flash your you just enter your domain name here 
and then whatever record you want to flash if it's everything you just flash it and then it clears all the cache and then it should be able to pick up the um, latest updates that uh, you meant to your um, DNS record yeah yeah basically that is it so I think I'll call this uh, 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 I'll end this session right here because if I continue, I'll continue talking so much about things that uh, may be uh, out of scope, but I hope this is important to you. So till next time, you have a good time. So next time we look at uh, 